Oh, my friends! Perlo Wisdom here from BPOW Picks. And uh, I got some interesting stuff I'm going to do here for the land. I'm going to be looking at centers in the NHL that could be available, possible. There's possibility. There has to be at least a possibility that they're available. So if you're thinking like Matthews and guys like that, like McDavid, no, they're not available. But these guys could be available, whom I would highlight and definitely go after if for some reason down the road they could become available. We'll talk about how possibly they could become available. I'm going to do this for wingers, defensemen, and goaltenders. And I'm going to be using analytics on the, uh, <clears throat> as I do it. Subscribe to my channel um, and uh, we can have much frolic together. Comment in the comment section as well. Why don't you? I've been doing, I usually do trade videos, but honestly with the cap the way it is right now, it's really tough to make trades. And I was looking at maybe doing Lindholm, but even at that, I think Calgary's going to have to roll with them until the deadline or something. It, it, there is not much of a market for anything out there. So I decided to do this instead. This is the analytics I'm using is from a fellow named Jay Fresh. And it's fantastic. I'm a professional sports handicapper, specifically NHL. For me, I have other people at bpalpicks.com. If you like to make tons of money, we're up 111 units right now. That would be, for the average per, you person's betting, that would be $11,100 just for MLB alone. <clears throat> so you can comment in the comment section. I'll send you a link. You can go peruse it for free. But Jay Fresh's analytics have helped me more than any other uh, system or uh, analytic that I have ever found. It's fantastic. 10 bucks a month. Go check them out. All right. So we're going to go. I got about nine guys here. They're sort of in order. Um, some of them are a little more likely than others, but let's take a look at them, shall we? Oops. Press the wrong thing. There we go. Okay, Dylan Strom, uh, Washington Capitals. Dylan Strom, he's, tw he's only 26 years old, um, and Washington picked him up from the Chicago Blackhawks for really not all that much, I, if I remember correctly. And I thought it was, at the time, I thought it was an okay move, but my buddy Peyton was like, this is a great move, this is a great move. And he was already using, uh, he was already using J Fresh Analytics at the time, and I wasn't. And I wish I now that I have, I can totally see why he said that. Now he's making uh, uh, six and a half million total salary, five million on the cap for a second line center who has really come a long way since his days in Arizona and Chicago. To Chicago, In fact, his last year of Chicago, he really started to turn things around and mature. And uh, Washington identified that, and he goes and has 65 points in 81 games. Now you think, okay, why would – this is – he's one, kind of on the lower end of the possibility of being able to – um, grab him because Washington is trying to get younger. They just picked him up, but somewhere down the road, they may say, you know what? I think we just need to totally rebuild here. And that could be sooner than later. If they have a really, really bad year, I honestly think it's possible that they could go that direction. Um, but I do think it's somewhat unlikely. Now, let's take a look at Strom's analytics in general. We're going to be looking at that guy right there as well. Dylan Strom. He is, as a second liner, his even strength offense is really good. He, he's a line, he, dri he drives offense. He can drive a line. 
And this was something you wouldn't be able to say about him when he was in his days in Arizona. Um, if you remember correctly, he was a third overall pick and struggled to uh, get his footing until he got into Chicago. Even strength defense, and this is one of the big things that I look at. When you look at teams like that have won the Cup in the last four or five years, they, the, the common thread among all of them is they have very few, if any, players that are poor defensively. And when I'm talking defensively, I'm not just talking about being in your own zone and doing things in your own zone. I think a lot of people mix that up. No, it's playing defenses in all over the ice um, mindset that a player puts himself into, that he knows when to take risks and he knows not when to take risks. He knows when to be on the right side of the man in the offensive zone. And uh, he doesn't spend too much time in the uh, defensive zone. And at He's, he's just barely above average, but if you're a play driver like he is, that's fine. I, that's that's more than, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. As a second liner who can put up 65 points, making $5 million a year, if Washington gets to the point where like, okay, you know what, Ovi, we did what we could. Like they really crapped the bed and they don't make the playoffs like by a long shot. Dylan Stroh might be there. I think that's somewhat unlikely, but also, but it's very possible. As you can see, he's also very consistent. This red line here shows you the uh, even strength defense for the last two years, and he's been pretty much right on par. His offense has kind of went up and down as well. Very consistent the last two years, and I think only getting better. He's only 26 years old. Now, what would I give? I'd give easily a first and a prospect for Dylan Strom right now. Um, you know, somewhere in the somewhere in the mid a mid first and and a and a good prospect. Easily, I would do that. I really like the guy. So that's that would be one. That's our first one. Next, and this is also unlikely, but. Um, Lucas Reichel of the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, this would be absolutely fantastic. I would give up an awful lot to pick up Lucas Reichel. Drafted by Chicago in the first round of 2020. 17th overall from Germany. Like I said, he's only 21 years old. And uh, he's been working his way up the roster, which I imagine he will be on their main roster this year. 15 points in 23 games last year. Uh, almost a point a game for the Rockford Ice Dogs. Um, so the question is, well, why would they trade a young player like that? Well, we've seen them do it before, right? Like, if they really still think, okay, we want to we want to keep on tanking here, if Bedard maybe doesn't look quite ready, uh, which, I mean, when I say not ready, I'm talking like to be the superstar that he's going to be, you know. He's not quite there. And they have a player that they like in the draft. We've seen them trade to Brinkat for... We've seen them trade Doc. Yeah, it, it is possible. That's why it's my second pick, though, because to me it's not the most likely of the bunch. Uh, he, uh, They're, they're probably going to hold on to him pretty tight. But what I love about him is... His analytics. For a 21-year-old, he's his offense really hasn't come around yet, but he's already um, a solid defensive player. And he's only 21 years old, and he's already almost average at running offense. See, this, this even strength offense that you see here, it's talking about how a player contributes to the offense. It doesn't necessarily mean goals and assists. Uh, there's a lot of ways to contribute to the offense, just like there's a lot of ways to contribute to the defense. There are players that have very uh, uh, very low even strength offense, but high projected war. I should probably tell you the war here means wins above replacement. In other words, at 76%, the 
that would mean that only a quarter of the teams as a third line or a quarter of the players in the league would give you a better chance to win than Reichel already at 21 years old. It's fantastic. Hasn't did well on the power play yet. Um, but his goals per 60, which means 60 minutes five on five played, is very, very good already at this age. Um, assist per 60 is more of a shooter, and that's fine. Penalties is just basically does he take bad, bad penalties. And, some, and young players have a tendency to do that, especially if they're playing a little higher in the ball lineup that their body can take. They'll, they'll take hooking penalties and stuff like that. But overall, I think this kid is going to be freaking awesome. I what would it take? What would I give up for a guy like Lucas Reichel? I would give them two firsts, easy, easy. Depending on where the firsts are, probably prospects. Like I love this kid. I love him. I think he's going to be absolutely amazing. The problem is, I think Chicago does too, and I think if you wanted to get him, it would cost you a lot. But he's well worth it. Somebody I would watch out for down the road. It's possible that they draft another center that's better than Reichel. And, you know, then then you've got a situation because they're going to be drafting a lot right now. Then you've got a situation where um, Reichel is, ends up being a third line center. And he, he goes to his agent and says, hey, wait a second here, you know. Like, I don't want third line money and all that kind of stuff. That's why a lot of things happen like that. Somewhere down the road. It's possible he could become available because, like I said, Chicago is probably going to be getting top picks in the draft for the next two or three years. And if they get another superstar center, who knows? Now, he do, I do believe that he does play wing at times, as can play wing as well, which would lessen it. But, nope, pretty much a center. Center all the way, so... It's possible down the road we might be able to pick him up. Uh, next, <clears throat> we already looked at him earlier, Nico Sturm. Nico Sturm is a 28-year-old center who I think there's a very good chance he could be available down the road. Extremely underrated. Only making $2 million a year for the next two years. Um, big, big center, Two, six, three, 207 pounds. He doesn't mind bringing the physicality to go with it. And, um, you know, I talked to a lot of people, like, that are happy with Boston getting Lucic and, you know, guys like Reeves. And if it's up to me, I, I, those are not the guys that are physical that I want. We'll look at Sturm's analytics here in a second. But he had 26 points in 74 games last year. He played... Third line minutes, I believe. We'll take a look at that from at Jay Fresh. Third line minutes at two million dollars. That's fantastic. Um, if he, if I'm in contention, if I'm somebody like Pittsburgh or. You know, Boston's looking for centers. I think, didn't he even play in Boston already before? Um, I'm hooking up with this guy. And I wouldn't be surprised if he even garnered a first at the draft. Uh, if people understand how good he is. Look at this projected war. He's well over uh, average for, as a third-line center in the league, playing on a really bad team in San Jose. And he's 28 years old. I mean, I don't even think he will want to be there come the trade deadline. He's getting to that age where he probably wants to go for a cup. He's has he drives offense pretty darn good for a third liner. And his even strength defense is, is above average as well. This is a guy who's kind of wasting his talents in San Jose. Um, not only that. He was way better than that the year before. His analytics the year before were way better. Goes to San Jose and things drop a little bit. I mean, it was a terrible team to play for. Most of San Jose's players do not understand the defensive part of the game. So I imagine that hurts a little bit. It's a funny thing with these analytics. They try to take 
into consideration. Uh, see, as it says, the competition and, and the quality of teammates that he has. Uh, and, you know, add that into it. They do the best they can. But sometimes I think maybe they don't really hit it on the head. Um, but I would be looking at Nico Sturm. I would give up a late round first for him. Uh, if I'm going to be a contender and I need depth at center, it's hard to find a guy who's big like that that can put up these kind of numbers. Uh, next, Jean-Gabriel Pajot. Um, now, to getting players out of the island is pretty difficult. They like, they like, Lamorello is as loyal as loyal can get. But if they have another year like they did last year, they may decide, to say, they may start saying to themselves, man, maybe we got to start getting younger here. Now, he has a moderate no trade clause. He's making $5 million a year. A little steep for a third liner. But he's a darn good third liner. Um, they did well to get him. He, he can put up 39, 40 points down the lineup. He, his teammates quality is not that great as far as his, as far as having uh, offensive players to play with. He doesn't really have the greatest line mates. Let's see, teammates, 47%. If you gave him some a little better a little more offensive players to play with i think his offense could be up could go up quite a bit but look at his his uh even strength offense and even strength defense this guy drives offense and is a leader of his line on defense as well he's a great two-way player doesn't have much of a shot uh he's not you know he's okay with finishing mostly because he he when he deeks but he's not a great shooter however he's pretty good at dishing the in the puck and he just knows how to play all over the ice i i love the guy and if the islanders do decide okay it's time i'm all over jean gabriel pajo no doubt about it um if if a team can come up with the uh cap room to get him drop a first and a prospect and pick this guy up because this guy is a winner all right Next, Kirby Doc, and I I think I should even have this lower actually, because I know Mo Montreal just loves 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 Kirby Doc. They gave up a lot to get him. Um, I have a higher because I just love the guy so much. He's a big boy, six four two twelve. Huge. He plays the way everybody likes to see a guy play. Rough and tumble. Hard hitting. Um, you know, it has struggled kind of producing offense in the NHL so far, but he had not a bad year, year last year. And he's the kind of guy that you want in the playoffs. A banger who, and this is what I look at. Like People say, oh, you just don't like tough guys no that's not true uh, that's not true because uh, i'll say like guys like ben Sherrod, i'm not a fan um you know reeves you know there's a, uh, a lot of guys that i'm not a fan of and, and simply just because they're big doesn't make them good and if they can't play i don't care if they can bang honestly i just don't care and when i say they can't play they're if their projected war is in the in the twenty percentile, fifteen percentile, that means that eighty five percent of the league can play better than them at their position. You're telling me the physicality is that important that you got to have a guy on the ice like that? No, for me, no, no. But this guy, I have plenty of time for. Um, he spiked up huge last year. You see, the projected war looks a little low. And a lot of that has to do with they're a little wary that, you know, the year before or two years before and the year before he was really, he had a pretty low uh, even strength offense and defense and his projected war was low because he's young. He's only 22 years old. 
last year it just all came together for him. Um, and also he had some injury issues as well. But last year it all came together for him. And look at his even strength offense at 63%. Even strength defense at 76% for a 22-year-old that is as big as he is, is phenomenal. Um, look at his goals per 60 is a little low. But he drives offense. He's a guy who, he's a kind of guy that is going to probably put up 40 to 50 points, something like that. Solid second liner. But this is a guy that I want to wear down the opposition because he's going to do way more than just hit people and put himself out of position so he can't come back into the play and all that kind of stuff like that. And he's only 22. He's only getting better. He's going to get better offensively. He's probably going to get better uh, even defensively. There's a possible stud here. So what would I give up for Kirby Doc? I would give up a crap load for Kirby Doc. I would give up a major prospect. If I'm like a team that doesn't want to rebuild, but and I'm getting older, sort of like the New York Islanders say, or um, maybe then you could maybe you could make a case like the New York Rangers, um, Florida Panthers, um, teams like that. That you know. They're, maybe Florida Panthers isn't a good example, but oh, Boston Bruins is a good example too. If they're not looking to rebuild, rebuild, but they still want to get younger, this is a guy that you take your prospects and go, what do you want? Like, what do you want? Because we still want to win now. Tampa Bay Lightning, guys like that. Tampa Bay does it all the time. They did it for Geno. They did it for Hagel. And I imagine they would do it for Kirby Doc. You would get a boatload back for him. Would Montreal do it? I think you'd have to give a boatload to them to get it. That's the thing. You would have to overpay at the deadline to pull them out. And I think the only way it could possibly happen is if they just realize that their, their prospect depth is so good that they think that they can replace them in the near future. It would be tough, but I would give a lot for Kirby Doc, and I'd be watching out for him down the road for sure. Next, William Carlson. And you're like, no way Vegas is trading William Carlson. Well, he's got a lot of years left at $6 million a year. To me, he's probably top five two-way center in the game. He's 30 years old. And I don't think this could happen right away because they are contenders right now. But Vegas isn't getting any younger. Stone is pretty beat up. Um... You know, there is a lot of things that can happen with Vegas that could put them into trouble where they got to sell off. And if I'm going to pay for a 30-year-old and I'm going to give up a lot of prospects, this is it. This is one of the guys I, I'd be looking at. We'll look at. Let's look at Vegas pretty quickly here to see, just quick here. Um, Jack Eichel's still young, so they're good there. Um, and they picked up Barbashev out of pretty good. But they got Chandler Stevenson's already 29. Marcia So's 32. Um, and those are like big pieces in their offense. Peter Angelo's 33. Their defense is getting old. Martinez is 36. Now, knowing Vegas, they'll figure a way to keep them and they'll add people because they just think things completely outside of the box. They've got some brilliant minds in there. But it's also possible that these aging players put them in a situation where they got to look at selling a little bit. And William Carlson being 30 years old and probably wanting a long contract, whenever that comes up, it's a few years away yet, maybe they, maybe, maybe he starts to become available. And if he does... And a lot of people have been saying this. Vegas is going to, you know, it's they're winning now, but watch out. The rebuild is going to be dreadful and all that sort of things like that. Like you hear it from prognosticators all over the place. Um, and I I don't I, I don't I'm not as sold as a lot of people are because Vegas just seems to do stuff you're not supposed to do. Like you're not supposed to have as good of a team as they did as an expansion team right out of the gate. 
Um, and it seems like they very seldom make any mistakes. But look at the even strength offense and defense on this guy. My God, man. He is an elite defensive player. Now, the projected war to me, the reason why it's like just over 57%, I would say, is because his goals per 60 and his finishing is not very good. Really, he should be a third liner. An elite third liner, a very good second liner. But he, at best, at his best, would be a third liner going up against the other team's top player every night. And... I would even take him at 5.9, even though he doesn't bring the he doesn't bring the offense the way you want for a second liner. Vegas also is always in cap trouble, so yeah. If I'm a team that is looking to win now and um, needs help, like a team like the Rangers could use this guy huge, huge. Edmonton Oilers, Toronto Maple Leafs, any team that has very poor offensive defense or very poor defensive players on their offense. And Edmonton's one, Toronto's one, New York Rangers are one. All of these teams, which should be clamoring all over them. But unfortunately, a lot of teams don't pay attention to the analytics as well. Um, but William Carlson's one of those guys that even I test says to you, oh, this guy's something special defensively. Like, he is all over the place. You don't really need analytics to know that. Sort of like the Bergerons. You know, nobody disagrees with Bergeron being at least one of the top three best defensive forwards of all time. Very few people do, anyways. I certainly don't. Analytics people, non-analytics people. Now, I don't think Carlson's as good as Bergeron. Don't get me wrong. But he's very good, spectacular at playing all over the ice and playing with an eye for the for defense all over the ice. I love him, love him, love him. If he was available, I would give up prospects in a first, even though he's 30 years old. No problems. Next. Shane Pinto. And this would be a tough grab as well. In fact, I know when I send this out to Ottawa Senators fans, they will immediately say, nobody's getting Shane Pinto. Nobody is getting Shane Pinto. The reason why I have him in here is because Ottawa's got a lot of centers coming up. All right? Um, they have a lot of young players coming up. And they're going to have a lot of players that they got to pay big time for in the near future here. And it's possible Pinto could get overrun a little bit. And Pinto could also look at himself and go, wait a sec, they're going to try to pay me as a third liner? I'm not a third liner. And I would agree, at least down the road I do anyways. He's 22 years old. He's, like I said, these young players that already managed their defensive side of the game in the 75 percentile like this, they they usually end up being very, very special players. His, his even strength offense play driving isn't as high as you would like right now, but by the time he's 25, I imagine he's a lot higher. This is just an incredibly intelligent player um, um, who has a great shot, he hasn't really figured out playmaking and using his line mates as much as you'd like and all those sort of things like that. But he also was a late first, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Second round pick, a late first. Um, in And when he was drafted, there was skating issues that are completely gone away. Like this guy has been going through the roof. And over going over and beyond his development curve every single year. I love him. I absolutely love him. The thing is, I think Ottawa would as well. And you would have to, again, you would have to give up a mitful for this. In fact, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they would consider moving Joshua Norris over Pinto 
if it really came down to it, if, if they see what I see and what a lot of people see in him, I guess, especially the analytics group, it's possible that that's the case. But it's also possible that guys like Ridley Gregg coming up would definitely fit more as a third liner as far as what he would be able to accept in the money side of things. They have uh, Sharche down in the minors who's playing really well. Um uh, what were the prospects I was going to say? Prospects. Oh, Oliver Johansson. Excellent prospect coming up. Like, they have a lot of centers coming up that can take over this spot. And when it comes down to Pinto's next contract, which is what? Is it now? Oh, he's got a yeah. He's they got to give him a contract now, so they'll probably give him a little bit of a bridge, maybe two years, something like that. But after that, Pinto, I believe, is going to be in a situation where he's a second line center, and if you've got Norris there, already making like six and a half, I believe it is. Eight million, already making eight million dollars a year. Pinto is going to be like, okay, man, I need to get paid. Well, he'll take a team-friendly deal. Well, if you know what? If he's my son, no freaking way. You're second-line center. You want to get paid like Norris. Not sit here in the third line getting paid $3.5 million a year. That's why I think it's possible that he could come available. But it would cost a mint to get him. Like, I'm talking picks and uh, all. They might even use them at that point to get um, a, a player to put them over the top for, for the playoffs. Um, somebody a little more veteran or whatever the case may be. But it's going to cost a lot. But I would take him in a heartbeat. I love, love, love this guy. Watch out for Shane Pinto. Next, Sam Bennett. And... First thing uh, Florida Panthers are going to say, there's no way we're giving up Sam Bennett. Well, he's got a contract coming up in 2025. He's put up some pretty decent numbers, and you've got Anton Lundell coming up. He's only 21 years old, who we'll talk about another time. And I imagine by that time, Lundell is going to be as good, if not better, than Bennett. And I don't think Sam Bennett's going to want third line money when it comes that time. So, and not only that, you've, there's prospects coming up the, for, uh, up the middle for Florida as it is. I just have a feeling he could get pushed out here in Florida eventually. And if he does, I would be all over it. Ninety-one percent offense. Like he's not as defensively strong as I would like to have on most players, but he's not bad. It, it, it forty percent. In fact, he, he improved a lot last year. He, he's been all over the map. Two years ago, he, if you look at, he he was up in the sixty to seventy percentile. That's what I know him to be. Kind of dropped. I think you could bring that back up again, and keep his offense as high as it is. But he. He controls the offensive zone. Um, he also is all the things that you want for the playoffs. Strong, beats people up, plays physical. He's got the grit. He's got the compete. He's got everything you want in a second liner. And like I said, I don't think he's going to want to take third line money when, when push comes to shove. And I would be able to pay him a little more than that. If I have a position for him at the second line, I would take him as a second liner for sure. 61% war is a little lower than he has been in the past. He usually is somewhere around the 70, 75% range. And I would give up, you know, you're going to, if you pick him up at the deadline, it's going to cost you one or two a first and prospects and all that sort of thing like that. But if you want a guy who's a playoff guy, 
who can play both ways and, and run an offense for you on your second line, Sam Bennett is a guy I would definitely be looking at. Next, and this is one that I think could be, this hurts me to inside to say this, but Ryan McLeod might get pushed out of Edmonton. Um, they've got Dreisaitl to sign. They have, they're, they're capped out all over the place. They, the nurse is making too much money and they can't do anything about it. Especially, you know, Jack Campbell making $6 million. Um, Dreisaitl, what's he going to get? You know, and you can only have so many players. Ryan McLeod now will be a free agent in 2025, and he's going to want a lot more than $2 million a year. I can assure you that. This guy is a diamond in the rough. I hate if the Edmonton Oilers would have to move him, and it wouldn't be for another two years yet, but or maybe next year if they realize he's just not going to fit in their cap structure. Um, he's just a luxury that they may not be able to afford, although I think they should go other ways besides losing him because he's uh, – what have I said about these young guys that are that are putting up even strength defense like this? Yeah, the offense isn't there so much, but he is a already well above average third-line center at 24 years old. Fantastic penalty killer. Um and he's going to, I think you're going to see a big jump. And in, in these kind of guys tend to take a little longer to develop. And also, isn't he big? Which is always good. Yeah, 6'3", 200 pounds. And these those, these kind of third-line guys always take a, take a bit to develop. But they're so valuable to have. I mean, you look at Deno... In L.A., um, we mentioned Carlson, although Carlson isn't all that big. When you had Patty Maroon in Tampa, um, you know, Sorelli, these guys are uh, – Stahl, in, uh, when he was in, with Pittsburgh, he's, he's those kind of guy. He's that kind of guy, and he's only getting better. And it's very possible that he won't – they, he's going to get priced out in Edmonton in a year or so if they can't work out a contract. If he comes up and says, I think I can be a second line somewhere, center somewhere, and I think it's possible he could reach those heights or at least an elite third line money when you're looking at like six, seven million dollars a year and you got to pay dry settle and you got to pay all these guys, he could come available and I am all over it. I identify like that's what I love about doing. I like identifying these guys in the future and seeing if they come up. But I'd be all over. Next, final one, Michael Backlund. This one's tough because he's 34 years old. I don't know what contract he's going to want, but we all, I, I'm sure, I don't know if you've heard, but Lynn Holm, Backlund, Hannafin whole bunch of players in Calgary, even though they fired Sutter, are still humming and hawing a lot about whether they want to stay in Calgary. And I don't blame them because Calgary has just been bungling for too long now. It's just they cannot seem to get their head out of their ass with players and, and the way to play this game. Um, I actually think Sutter is an excellent coach X's and O's wise, and he shows that. They play, but the problem is, is he just doesn't have the temperament for the modern player. And I can't say it any other way than that. And it didn't work out, pissed everybody off. Um, but they've gone through coaches and they've gone through everything you can imagine to try to change this lineup and try to try to bring in the right people. And it hasn't worked. And I think guys like Backlund and them were like, look, I gave it a shot. I, I really feel like my career could be coming to an end here. And I don't want to roll the dice anymore here in Calgary. So if he's available, though, um, he was making $5 million up. I don't think he's going to make much more than that. He's somewhere in that area. But check out this guy's analytics. Now, okay, the projected war is a little low here. Um, 
And honestly, I don't know why. This is one time when I, I got to go with Jay Fresh and go, what's going on? Why would you have his projected war? His even strength offense didn't go down. He actually stayed about the same. He actually had increased even strength defense. The only reason why I could think of this is like I was saying, he's more of a third liner. You know, he's not going to provide the offense really as much as you would like. He will, though, drive a play. He's got he's a guy that does little things to get the puck to the players that can score quite a bit. Um, the problem is, as you can see, his finishing is very low. He's he's not a shooter. And um, that makes it difficult to have him up in the second line. But you put him on a third line on a good team, which is where he probably should be, he's elite. He's an elite third liner. He's worth $5 million a year, even at 34 years old, for three years. If he becomes a free agent or if he's available at that deadline and you're like somebody like Toronto or um, – you know, Boston is it if they can if they can keep themselves there. New York Rangers, uh, Carolina. You know, there's a lot of teams out there that if you need that last piece, Carolina's pretty weak up the middle. Still, Kokaniemi's getting better, but a guy like Backlund would just oh, perfect. And he's a good playoff performer, and he's he's a great teammate, an awesome person, and. Uh, Fantastic two-way player. So underrated, it's amazing. I don't think you'd have to give up at 34 years old all that much. A late first or something. And you'll probably be able to get him for that. Um, I'm not 100% sure. If you can get him signed to a contract, it's probably going to cost you a little more. But um, I would definitely be looking at him in the future. What was, did he have a no trade clause? He's got a 10 team, no trade clause. So that could bring down his, what you give up to, depending on who he has on his no trade clause. All right. That's my full 42, everyone. That's all I have to give. Wanted to show you all of that. I wanted to have fun doing that. It was fun. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Okay.